Hi everybody, this is Michael Blaze and you are watching the Arts, Culture and Us. And uh, tonight I have my co-host, Maia, with us once again. And I have the pleasure of having Mr. Mark Maxwell of KPFK 90.7. Um, we're gonna talk about jazz. Is that what we're gonna talk about? What are we gonna talk yes, about? Please. Well, <laughs> I, I, I take issue with that word jazz. Let's, let's say creative music, because jazz was, remember that term that was handed to us, and that's not what we called that. We're going to talk about creative music, but okay. first, for those of you that may not know who Mark Maxwell is, let me just read a little bit to you to um, let you know who he is. So Mark Maxwell is one of the few cats left on radio that really spins creativity when it comes to jazz music. Mm -hmm. He is a program host on the radio station KPFK 90.7 FM in Los Angeles and streaming on web on the web at kpfk.org. The show is called Rise which he does live on Friday nights from 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. It is full of rich, extreme, avant-garde, bop, straight, ahead, and some of the coolest obscure, obscure cats of jazz music that you will ever hear played on the air. Unlike our other jazz stations in this town that is flowing like water along the curb straight out to sea, you will be amused, engaged, entertained at the selection of Mark Maxwell's music. And this is Mark Maxwell, father of Miles. That's right, <laughs> Miles Malik. <laughs> Three M's, tell us your son's whole name. Miles Malik Maxwell. Yeah. Three M's, yes sir. So now, uh, Maya, take it away. Let's, okay, let's talk about what go. you want to talk about. Well, first of all, let's talk about who you are. What inspires your programming? Why do we need jazz slash creative music on the air? Mm. Well, I, I call the, uh, the show a creative uh, celebration of African roots political consciousness, and spiritual transcendence. Mm. <laughs> I'm glad you asked that. And we question. try to hit all three of those points okay. and hit it strong. Uh, Say that one more show. time. Let me, let me get that It's right. a weekly, uh, well, I said jazz celebration, but we know that we can call it creative music celebration of African roots, political consciousness, and social, uh, excuse me, uh, spiritual transcendence. Yes, sir. And because I feel like this, uh, it's more than just a feeling, I know this music uh, has so much in it beyond just entertainment. Mm. It is such uh, strong purposes that, uh, that the music kind of serves. It brings our uh, history to us. There's so much coded into the music, you know, if you tune into it. And, um, and I noticed that, um, when I listened to other radio, there was a lot of music that I'd been introduced to from seeing live shows or buying records uh, and so forth that I was, just wasn't hearing on the, uh, on the radio and I couldn't really understand uh, why. So I thought to myself, well, if I ever get a chance to, to do, do something like a radio show, I would, there's certain people I would definitely like to Name expose. Name some of those people. Name some of the people and why. Some of those what, obscure ones. Yeah, what, what, to. what is it about those particular musicians that, that sparked your interest? Well, uh, people like, uh, and, and this is to, to me, in my world, this is not obscure at all, but okay. people like Pharaoh Sanders, Alice Coltrane, Sun Ra, Horace Tapscott, the, the Art Ensemble of Chicago. Uh, Henry Threadgill, we were just talking about, uh, you know, there's, there's so many of these uh, wonderful, wonderful musicians. We are just talking about somebody who's up and rising, a lot of, you know, there's a buzz going around for Nicole Mitchell. That's right. Who? Nicole Mitchell, she's a flautist. She actually was born in um, California, but she is actually, she's, she's, she's trailblazing in Chicago. She's um, a member of the AACM. Uh, I think she's vice president now, which is, that seat has, has not been held by other women. Mm. She's doing, she, she's opening doors musically, but she's also broadening 
the 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 history of black women yeah. in music. Yeah, which slash is slash creative music slash jazz. Yeah, <laughs> and th this is this is a real beautiful thing. I'm very uh, inspired by the AACM. That's the um, Association for the Advancement of Creative Musicians. It's a collective that started in the mid 60s 65 65 right um four four um guys that's um ooh, let me see if i can roll call uh, bill Perron, um uh Muhal malachi richard. favors muhal richard abrams no we mentioned malachi in our last Mabusa. show he passed away yeah no oh, this, this is a this a different one this oh, malachi, yeah. malachi okay. favors is gone oh. rest his soul in libation um and we also had jody christian and those guys got together um, one spring day, um, they had a need to express themselves outside of what was called the standards. And, 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 and there was a movement going on with the youth at that time, with people such as Miles Davis, and mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they were all young cats then in their late 20s and 30s. They wanted to expand outside of those parameters that was just considered jazz and, and started exploring um, other modal concepts, other con um, other cultures, and adding the musics of, or the world music, as it's called today, um, inside of those foundational, traditional chord changes that you find mm -hmm. in in American music. And now, here we've got 40 years later, um, Douglas Ewart, who is the chairman of AACM, known internationally. Um, a lot of the things that they do encourage not just the music, but the individual creative force. I mean, they would do whole concerts for two hours, going through several different instruments. And I say they, I, sh I should say us, because <laughs> I'm a member of the AACM uh, myself, um, but the whole concept of creating music, letting what is right now come yeah, forward is what it's all about every man it's not just confined to that out here no for instance right. well, i'm glad you asked that question there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you, that's you, why i got this job oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> you, you said that right as we heard the voice of a great poet kamal dawu yeah. uh, kamal has uh, been associated with uh, the Pan-African People's Orchestra. Uh, He's here. the one that's on uh, Dwight Tribble's song. Exactly. Living Waters, I think. Yes, For Africa. yes, exactly, Africa. exactly. And uh, uh, he's a, a wonderful person, wonderful spirit, and a wonderful artist. And as I said, he was, he's been associated with the Pan-African People's Orchestra that was led uh, by Horace Tapscott. Still led by Horace Tapscott. He made his ascension, but his spirit is still real strong. And he started a very similar situation out here in Los Angeles at a, almost the same time, 1965. Out of the ashes of the uh, the Watts uprising, uh, uh, you know, he got together with uh, uh, some other wonderful musicians that wanted to stretch outside the boundaries of just the standards and things, and they wanted to capture the feeling of their times. Uh, and uh, Linda Hill was a musician who, as I understand it, was very instrumental in this uh, group. Uh, a lot of, something like 300 musicians have come through the Pan-African People's Orchestra over the years, and people that, like Leon Thomas was singing with them for a while, uh, Arthur Blythe uh, was with them. Uh, there's so many, I, I can't even just go, and go ahead and name them all. But uh, they were community musicians. Uh, Horace was somebody, Horace is somebody who could have gone to New York mm -hmm. and made, you know, made a name and, and, and money and so forth. And he did go out to New York sometimes to play, but he always stayed rooted in South Central Los Angeles because mm -hmm. he understood the power of the music and, and what it gave back to the community. Mm -hmm. So he's been very influential on, on Rise and on me. Let's on Rise, just one more time, okay. I just want to say, and I, I'll let you get right you back to You know I get it. inspired. I just want to say <laughs> to our guests, you know, like, 
people surf around. This is Mark Maxwell, this is Michael Blaze, and you're watching the arts, culture, and us. And this is my co-host, Maya. Mark Maxwell is the host of Rise as KPFK 90.7 every Sunday from 11 p.m. until Monday morning at 2 a.m. I just want to throw that out. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Let's, let's, let's talk a little bit about social commentary expressed through music and the need for it. Um, I'll even say, when you think about um, the, music, the music movement and how the music always is like, a, uh, uh, like the soundtrack to what's going on. Mm -hmm. And the music we were talking about came, even though Tap Scott was out here and um, Koran and, and Favors and Muhal were in Chicago, there was that mood of change mm -hmm. slash revolution in the mid-60s, and that was expressed through the music. I want to talk a little bit about that, what you play on your station, how, how that's carried on or, or extended to a wider audience, and then talk a little bit about the bridge then and now. Hmm. <laughs> uh, Too much? No, no, no. Ah. Nice little bite. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> nice bite. Yeah, I, I was getting a little uh, uh, distracted because uh, you'd mentioned Dwight Tribble, mm. and that's who we're listening to singing right now. Dwight uh, was singing with the Pan-African People's Orchestra as uh, the choir uh, leader, mm. the great voice of Ugma, they call it. Ugma is the foundation, just like the AACM, mm -hmm. but the, the Pan-African People's Orchestra was the group. So you, you were saying, uh, talk a little bit about how the music deals with the time, how it did then and how it does now. And, and the, the musicians that you even showcase on your show, Rise, um, who you're inspired by, who you feel people need to hear who express that, who keeps that alive, and how it's bridging into today. Well, we, we've mentioned the AACM, and I definitely am very inspired by, by you all, I can say. <laughs> and um, so I try to play uh, everything from um, Art Ensemble, Chicago, to uh, Fred Anderson, to uh, uh, some of the younger players, uh, I think Jeff Parker, the guitarist oh, yeah. Jeff Parker. Uh, he, he's, he's crazy. <laughs> he's a fanatic. Yes. He's wonderful. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, so I definitely uh, am inspired by mm -hmm. them. And a lot of these other movements that happened around the country, like Bag in, in uh, the, the Black Artist Group that was out of St. Louis. Mm -hmm. uh, people like Oliver Lake mm -hmm. came out of there. Uh, um, Joseph Bowie, Lester Bowie's brother. Rest his uh, soul, too. A lot of the guys are gone. Yeah, yeah. And that's important, even in contemporary jazz as well as um, um, the standard jazz, the torch. We don't want it to go out. Uh, and we're at a, a certain time, we're at a point in, in history where just it's a natural um, situation that, like, the, the innovators of, of bebop for example, are all, you know, if they're around in the 70s and 80s, it's, it's that time, you know. We just said goodbye to Jackie McLean, you know. Uh, uh, there's a few beboppers left that, uh, you know, people like Roy Haynes and um, uh, Barry Harris was just in town doing a workshop, a uh, pianist out of Detroit. Mm -hmm. um, but but yeah, I, I, I try to I try to look back to to some of the music that preceded the creative music because it's all a continuum. I see it as a continuum. Yeah. That's why some of these collectors were so strong is because they understood that too. So it wasn't just trying something new out of the blue. They had a strong sense of 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 a tradition uh, and spirit. As you as, as you kind of threw that card on the table, spirit. And that's just not a, a an alien thing. It's 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 what makes all art mm -hmm. what it is. It's that individual 
force, that individual connection to everything that is, the universe, God, if you will. Yeah. You yeah. know. Um, it seems to me also, uh, when we did the last show, you brought up a very good point, which is it's not being transmitted or delivered to the youth. We right there, <laughs> right the there, because that's... The youth are, are into this electrical thing, yes. and they don't want to take the discipline of, you know, practicing a couple think... hours a day or whatever it might be, or, you know, and, and, and that a breakage in the link, mm. I would think. And, and, and like you said, let's extend the passion not wanting to, because a lot of them just don't know. Mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. it, it seems that in the public education in particular, public education, music and arts have been squeezed out. So, uh, you know, it, it, in public education, you don't have a lot of kids these days playing real instruments. And, and over the last 15, say 20 years is, is rare. But now all of a sudden, even hip hop, you got Beyonce, she's got real horns now, and, and, and Jay-Z, and, and P. Diddy, and all the other ditties and itties <laughs> are, are going well, into horn. So They can afford them now, too. <laughs> yeah, but, but what about this music? They're not that what they're doing is classified as bad or whatever. You know, music is, is for the soul, and all music is good, just like hair to me. <laughs> you know, but... You know, but, you know, just this whole thing about education and music, if you could. Yeah, well, you know, that. we were speaking for a minute earlier. I, I, I'm at a, at a uh, was born at a certain place in time where I was fortunate enough to remember when there was a lot of music in the schools, and in, in public schools. I grew up uh, with that. But while I was in school, we also saw the Reagan Revolution, which tried to, to uh, destroy every public uh, program, <laughs> whether it was music or, or the uh, mental health institutions or whatever. We saw homelessness rise up in, in a dramatic way, you know, when I was in, in high school, junior high school and high school. Uh, I remember when most kids, uh, in, in most black kids in school that I knew when I was uh, uh, in elementary school, if you could play something, a little of something, you know, and, uh, and then later on, by the time I graduated, I was meeting um, kids that had never seen the saxophone before, never seen the, the, the trumpet, you know, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> That's and a travesty. Yeah, it because really is. To be able to even identify instruments. And the fault is ours. We got to get on the case. As musicians, music lovers, we have to pick up the banner, mentor these children. If it's not in the school, you take your two or three children and teach them. Because that's where it started in the first place. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, back mm -hmm. in the yard, you know, chickens running around. And you. <laughs> get those little buckets and you, you know, teach some beats. And then even going deeper to our um, African, various African cultures is a part of the culture. Mm -hmm. We have to make it more a part of our culture to have live, now, spiritual expression. I music. agree with that completely, but I also must <laughs> say the majority of jazz that I hear I'm not sure what uh, smooth jazz is as compared <laughs> to some other kind of jazz, but the majority of the stations that I hear, and I happen to like, it's, it's, it's nice <coughs> music. It's, you can do your work and listen to it and everything. It's great. It's cool, right? But it's not really jazz, and yet that's all I hear. And that's who I'm familiar with in terms of who the artists are. And I'm thinking it's just like that with most people. Those artists, I know their names. Yeah, yeah. Of course, all their music sounds the same to me, but I know their names. Yeah. You, know, you know what I mean? You hit on something interesting <laughs> there. And, and I'm not, I'm certainly not uh, going to get into <coughs> thing bashing smooth, smooth jazz. Um, I like it. I'm and, not bashing. And, and, and you, said, you, said you, you said you could do things to it. And, yeah. Uh, you know, it's a work day music. It's, it's, it, uh, it's funny, uh, I think um, 
that's one of the uh, reasons it's out there is you can, um, uh, I don't know, the, the music beforehand, let's, before we got to this smooth uh, thing, take, or more commercial takes music. a certain, uh, yeah, t t uh, commercial, um, how am I, I'm trying, there, there's this, I got this idea and I'm trying to wrap my words around it. It's, uh, uh, there's a uh, smooth jazz, you can, <laughs> you can sell things with smooth jazz. It's, 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 uh, it's unobtrusive, it's, uh, you don't have to focus on it, you don't have to think about it, and uh, the, the whole, the, the, the capitalist system loves the unthinking consumer. They like that, just, you know, we just smooth, we just going through our day and just, you know, taking whatever comes. Uh, and I try to, I try to deal with music that actually engages you, that makes you, uh, look into yourself to, to, to really communicate with it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's more of a two-way thing than just, just being, uh, letting it just ripple over you. I remember the first time I heard the, the fool, the creator has a master plan. When he got to that middle part, when it was all confusing, I was like, <laughs> and, but when it came back and it smoothed down, it was like, wow, yeah. that is life. Life That's is life. so much. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and then all of a sudden you have those moments where you're still hearing the same music, but in a different environment where you can appreciate it, and it does all harmonize. And it makes you stand differently. It makes you speak differently. It does something differently to you. And it's, it's just one of those things that I would like to see, and I'm, I'm feeling that you would like to see more of starting on the ground level in, in the grade schools, going into high school, expanding out into the community again, mm -hmm, as mm -hmm. it was before, so that we can recapture, not go back, but recapture that, that essence, the, the real value of what the music is really supposed to do for you. Yeah. You know, we're, we're sort of running Deeply. down on time again, and I just want to say this again. Um, I'm Blaze. You're looking at the arts, culture, and us, and this is my co-host, my beautiful, intelligent, artistic, harp-playing, school-teaching, <laughs> actress, poet, Kwanzaa specialist, <laughs> Maya. Okay. <laughs> and this is Mark Maxwell, and I want to point out every Sunday evening from 11 p.m. Oh until into Monday morning at 2 a.m., you can catch Mark Maxwell on on Rise, KPFK, 90.7 FM Los Angeles, 98.7 FM Santa Barbara. And of course, uh, a little more, just real quickly on, on KPFK, it's such a great station. Uh, what, I got one minute left. Tell us a little bit more about that great station that you work for. It, it's what allows me to deal with this music. Uh, I, don't have, I don't have a playlist dictated to me. I don't have any kind of editorial dictate. And because we're not trying to please any sponsors, uh, except, well, the one sponsor we're trying to please is the listener, because we're a completely listener-sponsored, you know? And, and um, so it's, it's the people's <laughs> choice that we're trying people's to do. People's choice. KPFK, okay. once again, that's Sunday at 11 p.m. every Sunday, live. I heard a magnificent interview uh, last week. Who was the sister you were? Oh, Carmen Lundy. Carmen Lundy. Beautiful they vocalist. do magnificent yes. uh, interviews and so on. So I think we're just about at the end of our time here.